MKUltra was the secret CIA crash program to develop techniques to control the human mind. By the end of the Korean War, 70% of the 7,000 U.S. prisoners of war had signed confessions, 15% cooperated fully, and only 5% steadfastly refused confession or indoctrination. Professors Wolf and Hinkle submitted a secret report to Director of Central Intelligence Alan Dulles about communist methods of brainwashing that was the definitive work on the subject in 1953. It stated that no drugs or machines were used. Intense psychological pressure and human weakness were the key, beginning with solitary confinement. Guards constantly reminded the prisoner that he was totally cut off from outside support, ordered him to stand for long periods, dictated the positions allowed for sleep, waking him if he moved while sleeping, banned all outside stimuli such as books, conversation, or news of the outside world. After four to six weeks the prisoner would break down. Quote, he weeps, he mutters, and prays aloud in his cell. At this stage the interrogation began in a special room. The guard told him that he knew his own crimes all too well. The prisoner is in the position of trying to prove his innocence to he knew not what. The interrogator and the prisoner bond in their shared ransacking of the captive's soul. As the interrogation proceeded, the prisoner realized that he could only end his ordeal with a full confession. Quote, the prisoner feels that something must be done to end this. He must find a way out. According to a KGB man, more than 99% of prisoners sign a confession at this stage. Then the subject was either shot or sent to a labor camp after sentencing. Chinese techniques would move on to re-education of prisoners by moving them into a group cell for political indoctrination, incessant study of Marx and Mao, lectures and self-criticism led to political conversion by group pressure. Prisoners demonstrated their commitment by ferociously attacking any deviations. Constant intimacy with prisoners who reviled him for his resistance pushed the prisoner beyond his emotional endurance. As the prisoner conformed, his cellmates gave increased acceptance and esteem, which reinforced his commitment to the party, for he learned that only his acceptance allowed him to live successfully in the cell. In contrast, the American mind control effort was a mini Manhattan project, with the conviction that the keys to brainwashing lay in technology. The agency's brainwashing experts gravitated to people in the mold of the brilliant and sometimes mad scientists obsessed by the wonders of the brain. In 1953, CIA officer Richard Helms chose Dr. Sidney Gottlieb to run the technical service staff. The TSS through the Office of Research and Development, was given the job of developing poisons to assassinate political opponents, truth serum drugs for interrogating spies, and hypnotic techniques to create unwitting double agents, couriers, and robot assassins. Dr. Gottlieb used Nazi scientists and their state-of-the-art mind control techniques that had been perfected in concentration camps using victims of the Holocaust. General Dwight D. Eisenhower gave his personal approval to exploit the work and research of the Nazis in the death camps. The German doctors were brought to the U.S. and went to work for Project Paperclip. These men were insulated against war crimes charges. The Nuremberg prosecutors were shocked that the U.S. authorities were using German doctors despite their criminal past. Under the leadership of Dr. Strughold, Thirty-four scientists accepted contracts from Project Paperclip and were moved to Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. These personalities began to work on human radiation studies, aviation medicine, microwave technology, and MKUltra mind control experiments. The authorization to hire these Nazi scientists came directly from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The top military brass stated that they wished to exploit these rare mines. Operation Paperclip 
eventually recruited 9,000 Nazi scientists and technicians to help the U.S. destroy the USSR. Some of these scientists were known as programmers, people skilled in the art of breaking down and controlling the human mind.